fourth largest economy in Asia and the 11th largest in the world. The miracle on the Han River, Korea, and its capital city, Seoul. The Chamber is here in this thriving capital, offering comprehensive coverage of the nation's economic issues. I'm your host, Panita Bajaj. This week on the show, we discuss influencer marketing with panelist Todd Sample and special guest Chang Dae-ryeon, professor of marketing at Yonsei University. And for those of you guys who are interested and curious about Korea's economy and what goes on around the world, we are here in Seoul, the economic hub of Northeast Asia. So without further ado, let's step into the chamber. Well, Professor Chang Dae-ryeon, Todd, Hi. thank you for joining us on the show today. We're going to be talking about dream jobs. Now, for you, I've heard you're a man with many hats. Yes. Was this your dream job to become a professor in, in marketing, a director, I've heard as well? <laughs> uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, I did want to uh, become an academic, but I also wanted to... Uh, be a filmmaker, but now I have the luxury of being uh, able to do both. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolute blessing. Now, yes. nowadays, you know, uh, among students, the dream jobs tend to shift here and there. Sometimes right. it's the idol groups, they want to be a singer, an actress, right. and things like that. Right. However, nowadays, uh, the recent change is YouTuber. It has been chosen as one of the most desired jobs amongst elementary students, now otherwise known as influencers. Right. That's an interesting word that they use or interesting term that they right. use. It's truly changing the landscape of social media and marketing trends as well. So my first question will have to be, well, what's an influencer? I mean, anybody can be an influencer. We've heard of bloggers before, but what's the difference? An influencer is anyone, and maybe the uh, emphasis is on anyone, who creates content that then attracts the interests of many people. Uh, I think it's um, an, an evolution of what we call an opinion leader in marketing. And as long as you've had people, I would differ uh, uh, and argue that you've always had opinion leadership. Again, anyone, as long as they create that uh, content of interest, right. can become an influencer. Yeah, and you never know what that content could be. Exactly, exactly. So we know that influencers, they have different purposes and actually can have a different effect on branding campaigns depending on what type of influence they have. So in terms of the types of influencers and how we categorize them, could you perhaps share some of your opinions on that? Sure. Uh, I think you can categorize them uh, on various dimensions, one by the sheer scope of people mm -hmm. that they influence. So I think it's analogous to a pyramid mm -hmm where on the very top you might have the real big uh, so-called mega influencers. And we're talking about people like uh, my footballing hero, Cristiano Ronaldo, a, a football person. Mm -hmm. And he might have, uh, God knows, 10 million, million, something million like Instagram that. Instagram followers or something so, like so that. So that. That, that would be at the very top. But uh, then below that you have uh, so-called uh, macro influencers, and these are people who are specialists in their fields. And then below that, you will have um, uh, 
micro-influencers, and they have uh, perhaps up to about 10,000 followers or subscribers. And finally, you have uh, so-called nano mm -hmm. influencers who, who will have under 1,000. Okay. So uh, that would be the quantitative way. Mm -hmm. But many people argue that because th these are just numbers, and uh, we'll talk about that later, I'm sure, uh, these numbers may be uh, inflated. Sure. Uh, you also should look at the, the quality of the influencing. Right. And so you have uh, metrics such as uh, the engagement rate, mm -hmm. which is where you combine likes with comments sure. and divide that by followers or the number of impressions. So there's actually a formula for that kind oh, of yes. thing. Yes. Oh, yes. Of course. Right, yeah. right, right. Very I think for me, I would categorize myself as a nano, a nano <laughs> influencer. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can go into the micro influencer category. You but can do it. Yeah, <laughs> I believe in myself. Next week, you'll see me at the mega at the top. There's a will, there is a way. Why not? But with the growing presence of mobile platforms, like you said, anybody yeah. can be, and I think any everybody is, yeah. in a way, an influencer, yeah. influencing their peers or just anybody who yes. is their follower. Yes. Um, what is their scope, the power, the, how much power or how much influence they have? Yeah, uh, again, I think it uh, varies by the influencer uh, and uh, the number of macro influencers numbered more than uh, 1,200. And uh, to put that into uh, perspective, because I'm a marketing professor, that's like having uh, 1,200 uh, small cable channels. Right, you're and, right. Uh, and then you have uh, among them 1% who are uh, mega influencers. So they have almost broadcast uh, channel capability. Their, their own network. Yeah, and best of all, uh, they're cheaper than advertising. So in many countries, uh, including Korea, you'll see that broadcast television is uh, decreasing, whereas with uh, digital and mobile, that's really on the rise. Yeah, it's a big market. It's, it's no joke, and it's continuously growing. I mean, I myself, I said, nano, maybe micro, but we've got a macro here, big ooh, boy. Ooh. <laughs> That's right. I mean, ooh. in the studio, Todd, I mean, you have your own experience with um, social right. media and your own company and things like that. Could mm -hmm. you share a bit about sure. your social media, your marketing, of all those course. strategies? Well, I think we're up to about, in total, 130,000 followers on our different channels. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if I could put, pinpoint three different concepts that have given us the ability to, to bring together this many people, I would say, first of all, is sincerity. Mm -hmm. That's a really important part. Right. Uh, second of all, differentiation, mm -hmm. uh, to be different than everybody else. Right. Uh, and, and for myself, Unlike other influencers, we've tried to take the social media influence and then take it offline too. So right. that's something right. where you're actually creating a physical community rather than just someone who's online pushing a button to say like, where right. they can actually be personally involved right. in the community, the experiences that, that we've created. So for me, that's been the So formula. it's O to O, uh, so to speak. Yes, that that's correct, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. So yeah. we've been pretty successful in being able to take people off of Twitter, off of Instagram, right. and then bring them to events right. where they actually pay to attend. So right. uh, this is something that uh, for our small business here in Korea, we've been somewhat successful in doing. So yeah, it's great. And Congrats. Right. Yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. I have a lot, lot to learn from you. <laughs> Let's, uh, we have a lot to talk about, I think. Could you guys switch seats, actually, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> but exactly, as you said, even um, marketing for you is much cheaper than mm -hmm. you know posters or ads on television That's or anything right. like that. You have your own channel, and people can come in as they please, um, and they'll get their information as much as they want. And these influencers, they make a fortune, yeah. um, which I think is one way to kind of gauge their power and impact on society. But if we take a look at you know celebrities, their their big amounts per post. Right. If we're looking at Instagram, but for YouTube and other you know video streaming services, it's millions and millions right. of dollars. How much? Do they earn exactly? I'm curious. I think we have to be very uh, careful because um, uh, some people have a business model in their influencer okay. uh, channels, whereas I think a lot of people, a lot of influencers, so-called, aren't making money. So I think it does really depend on the kind of partnership that you have mm -hmm. 
you can create your own channels, but I think a lot of these influencers, the ones that do, uh, do make money, do so because of uh, them having sponsors who are willing to advertise on their media. I see, so not only viewership. <clears throat> right. Okay. Right. So that's where the credibility issue comes right. because you, they're influenced, but also, you know, are you being honest with what exactly. you're saying? Because people know that there's a company behind you right. putting money into the message. Right. And so that's a really very fine line yes. to, to balance upon. And uh, I absolutely agree. Yeah, it's not yeah. easy, actually. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah. But I, I think if you look at some of the, the, the big influencers, both in Korea, uh, these numbers are not small. For, for YouTubers, in fact, domestically, we have, uh, the, in terms of the top three or top four highest paid Korean YouTubers, we're talking millions of of not one, but dollars in terms of annual income that they are making from the YouTube accounts. So Hey Genie is one of the popular Korean YouTubers here. And according to what we have here, she's making close to 2 million US dollars a year through her YouTube channel. Yes, that's, a, that's professional athlete money right. in a lot of countries or even right. more than that. Uh, Dedo is a, right. which means great library in English, they're yeah. pulling in close to 1.5 million US. Uh, SSIN is close to a million dollars, and, and BANZZ, Bans, I'm not sure if that's the correct name, but <laughs> Bans, uh, almost uh, a million, just under a million, 850,000 US dollars a year. So if we take a look globally, in fact, then although the numbers in Korea look really big, they're dwarfed by the numbers of inter people with international influence. And in terms of YouTubers, uh, what's interesting is that the most popular internationally in terms of income per year is a kid doing a YouTube channel. So Ryan's toy review pulls in $22 million a year. Oh my goodness. And I think he's under 15 years oh old. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is amazing. So what he's doing is just opening toys. Playing with them. On, on YouTube <laughs> and playing with them and giving a quick review. And Dude Perfect is another one who's 20, at the $20 million level. So again, these are at Annual, $20 million annually, that means you can actually buy a sports team in a few years, not just, <laughs> yeah, th these are amazing figures. So, of course, that global interest, we're talking about 7 billion people around the world who are highly connected and, right. and watching right. less TV and more on the YouTube, so. Sure, it's such a wide variety of what the content could be. I mean, we're looking at reviews, but also, you know, just day to day blogs of some sort and you know makeup and things like that um, and it's, I guess it's the most visible way that influencers can make money will as be as you said ads sponsorships and merchandise selling physical products but they are changing the landscape of marketing trends right. so could you elaborate a little bit more on that subject yeah I wouldn't go f uh, uh, too far to say that there has been a seismic change mm -hmm. but uh, the future uh, will show that uh, these influencers offer an alternative channel to uh, not only companies but uh, consumers alike uh, that are more uh, personalized and therefore authentic mm -hmm. per uh, Todd's exactly, comment. Exactly, exactly. And so for products where that matters, such as uh, in health, uh, in fashion, and in beauty, Influencer marketing will be very effective, not only now, but especially in the future. Sure. Right, yeah. yeah. According to actually, according to a recent survey, 84% of the respondents said that their primary source of information is actually influencers. That's and amazing. That's a huge number. That's and, amazing. And in terms of people who have actually bought something as a result of that influence, we're yeah. talking 76% of the respondents of this, of this survey. So as you mentioned before, uh, these influ this influencer marketing has now has become a major part of international and, of course, national marketing campaigns. So uh, what is the size of this market value, actually? Okay, uh, here I think we're on a little shaky ground because you have so many different uh, sources. So depending on the report that you cite, it can be as big as maybe 10 billion, but some experts put it at maybe half that or even less. But I think the, the more important statistic is growth. And, and so whether it's five billion or 10 billion, uh, the three digit growth rate, what that portends is that we're talking about a huge market that can't be ignored, mm -hmm. neither by companies or by uh, people mm -hmm. who want to become influencer marketing. I think that is the allure 
of influencer marketing. Absolutely. I mean, that's the reason why it's so popular amongst kids is because, you know, you do a review, you play with toys, you set up a camera, yeah. boom, yeah. 20 million followers, $20 million. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely alluring to anybody, not yeah. even kids. Yeah. But frankly speaking, the market size of influencer marketing varies on uh, one place to another, one person yeah. to another, yeah. on what they categorize influencer marketing to actually be. Um, but it's clear that growth is at a rapid pace or it's going somewhere. We're seeing that ripple and it's getting bigger. What can the reason for that be? In one simple word, trust. And uh, you think when you see someone on YouTube or Instagram that they're your friends. This is what we in marketing call a parasocial relationship. Okay. So uh, we assume that they have your best interests in mind. So uh, these products uh, are uh, placed organically and therefore we don't think that they're trying to sell us something, even though the ulterior motive may be exactly that. So I think it's akin to, let's say, watching a fancy car in a Bond movie mm -hmm. or a delectable food item in a cooking show or a nice suit or dress uh, that you also want to wear. Right. So that is, I think, the difference between influencer marketing and just a regular uh, commercial. Social media has exploded in popularity in recent years, becoming a powerful marketing medium. As a result, many social media stars or influencers have been using their extensive reach and reputations to sell goods. But as with all good things, there are some people who misuse their social influence and trick consumers, and that number is growing year by year. 일반인 분이신데 자기가 옷 같은 거를 올리실 때가 많단 말이에요. 근데 이 옷도 그런 식으로 판매하시는 거여서 구매를 했던 옷이거든요. 어떤 거는 정말 괜찮기도 하고 어떤 거는 오히려 이제 광고에 비해는 별로다라는 평을 했는데 솔직히 그런 거는 이제 알고서는 사는 것 같아요. 속는 셈 치고 한번 광고 믿고 사본다라는 약간 그런 게 있는 것 같아요. According to the Seoul Electronic Commerce Center, the number of consumers on social media has been increasing every year. As of 2018, a whopping 55.7% of people had used social media for shopping, up 9.1% from 2016. But the number of people who've been ripped off in some way has also grown from 22.5% to 28.2%. 인플루언서들을 통한 이제 물품 판매들이 굉장히 많이 발생 그 일어나게 되는데 사진을 통해서 굉장히 화려하게 이제 살고 있는 부분들을 이제 뭐 등장시킨다든지 뭐 하면서 소비자들에게 이제 동경하거나 이제 신뢰감을 일단 쌓은 후에 물품 판매 당시에는 굉장히 이제 친절하고 뭐 그렇게 친근하게 하다가 구매한 후에 소비자가 이제 불만을 제기하거나 뭐 반품을 하거나 하면 뭐 그를 차단하는 경우들도 있고. Overall, the number one cause was false advertising and inaccurate information. The real problem is a lack of proper regulations to protect consumers online. So, what should consumers be aware of in order to protect themselves? 개인간 거래로 그 구분되기 때문에 관련 이제 전자상거래법에서 이제 보호를 받지 못하는 그런 한계가 이, 있는데 이런 부분들이 이제 점차 늘어나고 있기 때문에 어쨌든 좀 대안이 조금 나오는 것이 좀 필요할 것으로 보입니다. Influencers have enough popularity and influence to get others to spend money. Their long reach comes with a lot of responsibility. To combat the culture of distrust in influencer marketing, absolute clarity between influencers and their followers will be essential. Well, Instagram is becoming a, a large platform as well, not only for influencers and peers to come along and contact their friends and things like that, but also to sell products. Have you experienced the same thing, maybe inaccurate information or anything like that? 
Luckily, not that often. Um, I moonlight as a uh, indie filmmaker, and so I get uh, festival notices on my feeds. Right. And I found that some of them have had uh, inflated uh, follower numbers, and uh, and some 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 ones even turned out to be fake festivals. So oh, wow. so I ended up uh, getting cheated on my su submission money. So. Mm -hmm. The occurrences have been rare because I'm always guarded, but it's happened to me. So there should be a policing of that. Sure, I guess it's a relatively new concept as it is growing um, rapidly. So as, actually, as we've mentioned that as more and more people are shopping through Instagram, there are uh, a growing number of complaints about well, faulty items or low quality products. And so as a result, the Korean Fair Trade Commission has announced that they're going to start scrutinizing these uh, advertisements from influencers. And right. do you think it's going to be a real, a real solution? No. My honest uh, answer would be, I think it's just a slap on the wrist okay. because we're talking about a, a systematic problem mm -hmm. and therefore I think you really need a systematic uh, solution. So do you see a sense of self-regulation as well? Oh, yes. The oh, yes. Community? I think self-regulation, especially by uh, the uh, platform agencies, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, vital. Okay. Very interesting. Right. Well, not only that, but, I mean, tax evasion yeah. seems to be a pretty big issue. Yeah. I mean, it's very sensitive when it comes to celebrities with right. big money here in Korea as well. Apparently, some are making tens hundreds of thousand, we just looked at millions of dollars uh, a year, but not paying enough tax. So what is being done to address this topic? Yeah, there is undoubtedly a black market for um, influencer marketing where people are making a, a lot of money and not reporting them. Right. But I think the good news here, un unlike um, offline black markets, is that with online black markets, you have a so-called digital trail. So I think if regulators are smart enough, right. they can trace the money, the money trail digitally. Mm -hmm. And when they discover violators uh, who haven't paid their fair share of taxes, they can be, I think, uh, then penalized and uh, maybe the money collected. Right, yeah. Well, people say last year was uh, quite a pivotal year, 2018, for influencer marketing. Um, we had a bit of disadvantage, some cons we talked about today. The industry is still expected to see a huge growth this year for 2019. So what do you think needs to be done um, from the government, these policies, these restrictions, or when it comes to tax for these influencers, even for consumers ourselves, we don't want to be conned into something right. um, from our money or just from the clothes that we buy. It leaves you with a, a bitter taste in your mouth. And we need these types of policies to strengthen the industry to make it grow even more. That is a very uh, difficult question to answer because, uh, again, it's a comprehensive problem and therefore it calls for a comprehensive solution. I think a lot of uh, players have to come together, not only the government, but also advertisers, uh, platform agencies, uh, influencer marketers, as well as uh, c the consumers themselves. So I think you need a, um, maybe a five-pronged process where A, uh, you have to uh, make sure that transparency is uh, there, especially about whether a content is uh, sponsored uh, or not. Uh, and B, uh, make sure that the uh, influencer's uh, follower uh, stats are not inflated. Right. And, and C, uh, enable the, the measurement of the impact of the influencer such as using met metrics uh, like uh, return on advertising spend, uh, also uh, known as ROAS. Uh, and D, uh, conduct a vetting of the credibility, the trust of the influencer, such as uh, their content. And finally, uh, E, make sure that the buyers themselves are more prudent about how they make their decisions not just simply based on the number of followers an right. in influencer uh, may have. And I think much of this can be done by the uh, platform agencies because they act as the matchmakers mm -hmm. between the um, advertisers and the influencers. So I think it's in their best interest to self-regulate 
who are the uh, uh, good influencers uh, and those who are not. Well, in any case, thank you very much, Professor and Todd, for joining us on the show today. Yeah, as we took a look at, you know, the influencer market with its socioeconomic impact and challenges, although it's faced some negative issues, there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. It's still the number one dream job for kids, you know, high hopes as well. So it's still expected to grow even bigger this year. Let's see how the influencer market evolves in today's social media driven world. And that's all the time we have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to join us on, you guessed it, social media. And we'll hope to answer your economic questions there. We'll see you next time, same time, same place on The Chamber.